Hi, this is the Viceroy and you're watching DJSounds.com. The gallery has uh, entered its 16th year this year and I've entered my 6th year of being involved with it. Um, I got involved when I was 18, I just moved to London and I uh, was looking for somewhere to go and I started off doing the mailing list and the membership and then two years later I was doing a Thursday night trance session there called Vaccine which moved to the Friday night and I became involved in the Friday night bookings and became a resident and ever since then um, I've been involved with the rest of the team. Um, so to quantify what it means to me, it, it's everything. It's where I started, it's how I started, it's what I am DJ-wise and work-wise. So um, yeah, it's the be-all and end-all really for me and how I got started. The DJ Booth Ministry of Sound and, and that box, it's called The Box. I think Mark Knight described it as like like DJ, like like DJ, for DJs, like footballers playing at uh, Old Trafford, the Stadium of Dreams, it's like DJs playing at Ministry at the, in the box. Every time it comes around to a new year, they go, we're going to uprate the system. And I think, well, what, in the, in, the, in the bar or the other rooms? No, no, in the box, in the box. And you think, really, does it, does it, does it need it? Um, this year, they added another six subunits on, which is um, just added that extra lump, really, that I didn't think was needed, um, because really your heart shakes against your rib cage in there. It is a phenomenal system. You have to, you have to be careful with it because any rash movement of uh, volume sliders could result in serious damage. Um, the sound technician told me the other day that when we have it full loud on a Friday night, that's only one sixth of the power that it can output. And that's quite scary. Um, but yeah, it's incredible. I love the ability to come out of a studio on a Friday. I get the tube up there. No one's in the club at eight o'clock. Turn the system on and just listen to my latest production in that room. Um, I don't think it's a better way of sort of road testing anything. Um, but yeah, it's a phenomenal system and they're so proud of it. It's a Martin Audio system and, and the Martin Audio guys come down regularly just on nights out to check that it's still sounding tight and good. And, uh, and I think it's a credit to them and, and to Ministry sort of ethos about sound that it is such a, a highly revered box. Wherever I go in the world, people say, where do you play? I'm just saying, oh, wow, I've heard about the sound system in the box, even if they've never been there. London has changed a lot in 2010, that's for sure. I mean, crumbs, I mean, when we left Turnmills, that was the closure of uh, the end, the cross, canvas, and Turnmills went. Matter opened, that is now shut this year, which I don't think many people foresaw. Fabric's still going strong. There are other venues coming and going. There are lots of big events, lots of people doing Brixton Academies. We've seen already this year, the Swedish House Mafia, Paul Van Dyke, Above and Beyond are doing one later this year. And obviously the rise of new festivals like the LED Festival, and of course our own one, SW4. I think London's in a real, a real middle ground at the moment. I think it's trying to find its identity and what it wants to do clubland wise. I don't know that it, it quite knows where to go. A lot of people are traveling abroad for festivals to Ibiza again, but up and down the country tonight. And I think somehow a lot of regular club nights have not found new homes since venues are shut. And I think they'll struggle to do so. And I think that we see probably more one-off events, more special bigger events, things outside the box, special venues, warehouse parties, as London struggles. So I think to find its identity now, I think the era of having seven or eight big clubs where everyone went either one week or another week is pretty much finished, to be honest. Gallery Sessions uh, is broadcast each and every week um, from Ministry of Sound, who's got their own radio station uh, built in at the club, just down the road from here in Gaunt Street. It goes out between six and eight on a Friday night, and it's myself and Gavin Mitchell, the other resident, we do an hour each, sort of showcasing the sound of the gallery, um, broadcast obviously before the club opens on a Friday night, so people can get a flavour of it. Uh, we uh, occasionally ring up a few DJs and surprise them uh, in, uh, before they come to play on the phone. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been going, I think about, the radio show actually predates us moving to ministry. Gavin's been doing the radio show for I think about five, six years, and it, it is through the radio show that we moved from Turnmills to Ministry of Sounds, because it was Gavin's connection, uh, we're going there each and every week doing the radio show that meant that when we were looking to move from Turnmills, he uh, managed to find the desk of the person in charge of ministry and sidle on over. So in many ways, I suppose the radio show is, is why we are still here. Um, but don't let Gavin know that. As we enter a 16th year, it's about looking forward. It's about being weekly without sounding like you're full of cliches. Um, it's about bringing through those new people that are going to bring you on for the next 16 years. We brought through so many people in the past, the open folds of this world and all that stuff. Now it's about the uh, Marcus Schultz's, the Sander Van Dorns, so the next generation of people that we've been building up um, and about nurturing that new talent so that it is doing a weekly party. You can't just put on the 12 biggest DJs of the year once a month like a lot of the other parties do who've gone monthly. Weekly, you've got to have a commitment to good music wherever it might come from. So it's about mixing it up, supporting new acts, taking risks. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But 16 years, to survive another 16 years, we're going to have to be bigger, bolder and 
braver, I think. Well, technology-wise, I'm very fortunate that Ministry of Sound seems to just constantly be supplied with the biggest and best kit. So at the turn of last year, I moved over to working with Traktor um, using the CDJs to control my laptop and then got a K1 controller, which I love, absolutely love. Um, but recently, I've been really massively converted to the whole record box USB dongle thing. Um, purely because being a resident and playing at the end of the night often at Ministry, I know um, I know the equipment's there, I know what the setup is, and um, I can just prepare a load of tracks in Recordbox and drop it in. I'm absolutely loving the dongle thing. Problem being though, sometimes when you travel abroad internationally, not everyone's got the 2000s yet, and uh, until that comes, I don't see myself ditching the, the tractor and the CDs perhaps yet, but I love to have the option. I think it's, um, it's great, and loads of DJs are turning up actually to play. It's interesting to see some of our guests. A lot of them are turning up with a CD wallet for their two gigs that weekend, but then they'll take out a bunch of keys or something and on them they'll have a couple of dongles. Uh, I mean Armin does this, for instance I saw the other day when we last had him at the club. That's a very clever concept because you suddenly got your whole back catalogue with you or, or your load of classics if you need them and I like that way of thinking. It's just it's just constantly evolving isn't it, it's brilliant but it's great running the night to see who, who what people bring into the club and chain and I noticed a lot of people who were bringing in large tractor or Serratus setups are now coming in with one or two USB dongles and it's surely got to be the way forward. Vaccine originally was a, a night that I co-ran on a Thursday night with a, a, a chap called Ben Beaton um, bringing new trance talent to terminals before anyone else. We then moved to take over this third room at the gallery bringing new trance acts over and in, in our time we were going, I think, two and a half years. We brought pretty much everybody over who you now see as an established trance name. Marcus Schosso, Sean Tyus, Richard Durand, Bart Klaas and Ronald Van Gelderen. The list goes on of Kyle and Albert, people who we gave our debuts to in this country. So when Terminal shut and we left the night there and I moved on to doing the gallery full time, we sort of set up the label Vaccine Records to sort of carry on the tradition of that. We've had a series of releases to date. Um, which sort of have taken that concept further, supporting new producers on the originals and getting some bigger names on the remixes. Um, and it's a, like all things, it's a sort of fledgling little label that's struggling out there in a digital world. But we've got a really packed release schedule coming up. We've got a couple of tracks myself on there um, and supporting some really new talent like people like David Murtar, um, George Hales, Phrase, all right, really good UK bods and getting some bigger names on remixes like Martin Roth, Kyra and Albert to support them. Um, so it's sort of keeping that concept alive leaving the club night at Terminals because we felt it, it was there, it was best to leave it, but carrying on that ethos that we think is really important. Productions, um, I've literally, well, just, just, just on my way to see you today, I've just been in the studio finishing off uh, a remix of a, a new project that I'm working on with um, a very talented group of people called Zyron, so two classically trained opera singers and a guy called Curve. We're doing a, a collaboration taking classical themed music and reworking it. So we've just done a rework of Henry Purcell's Lament of Dido. Uh, which was voted the number one piece of classical music on BBC Radio 3. So there you go, there's a bit of culture for you. Um, and so I've just been doing a remix of the original track today, which um, is going out to a few labels. I've just signed a collaboration that I did with a very talented composer called Koto to John Fleming's Juif label. It's called The Horror. Um, and it very sort of personifies really the type of music that I play, very dark, broody. Um, music to kick things to, I think, how one person described it recently, um, if I can say that. Um, and obviously I've just um, completed a couple of other originals which will be coming out on Vaccine as well. Uh, one's called Body Bag. It is very much a dark theme actually in the names of my tracks. Um, I've had a few releases previously. I did a collaboration last year on Vandit with Gareth Wynne called La Galleria, um, which went down very well. And yeah, I'm back in the studio with a vengeance really. Um, when we moved to ministry initially, I sort of took a little hiatus from studio work for about a year mainly because I was focusing purely on the night, but I've uh, got the bit between my teeth and I'm now back in uh, each and every week causing some audio carnage.